Hello and welcome everybody to another video from Joggler66, Hour of the Truth. This is still within the realm of uh, Babylon Mystery Religion, the book Ralph Woodrow wrote in about 1966, it was published. And you know, when I made the first video of the first chapter and said that I wanted to read the whole book, I got a lot of very supporting comments and one from a person called American Beacon, uh, American Berean, who stated that Mr. Woodrow recanted of this work. This was, of course, absolutely known to me even before I started that book. And as I told you in a uh, few occasions with earlier readings of the book, I told you that I was going to make a video on uh, the recanting that he did on his book. And this is the video now, Babylon Mystery Religion, a questionable recantation. Why is his recantation from Mr. Woodrow of this book questionable? Well, that is a question that will be answered um, while I'll tell you, first of all, my point of views of this, and second of all, I refer to a letter from a certain John Rothaker, uh, from John Rothaker Ministries in Columbus, Ohio, in the United States, who wrote a letter on the 30th of June 1998 to Mr. Woodrow, in answering to his newsletter that he received from Mr. Woodrow and um, telling him uh, why he was shocked, grief and disappointed when he read the last three books that Mr. Woodrow put out and uh, that he recanted actually from the book Babylon Mystery Religion. I will put the uh, links that are important for you in the description box of the video as always and I will not even go into the recantation of Mr. Woodrow himself, which I could easily read here. But I do not do that because his recantation of the book is ridiculous and it is absolutely not fact-based. You have to know that for the most part he attacks Alexander Hislop's book, The Two Babylons, on which he based his writing. I'm not saying that Ralph Woodrow was... Um, how do you say that? Um, guilty of plagiarizing, meaning taking the work of somebody else and putting his name on there. There are people I know who do that, but that's not what he did. But he used the research Alexander Hislop did, for the most part, to write his own book, Babylon Mystery Religion. And then, all of a sudden, with his recantation, he attacks, in most of his recantation, Alexander Hislop's book. This means that in the first place he discredits the work of an author who has written on this subject more than 100 years earlier, cited numerous different historicists and ancient works to sustain his book, and by that Mr. Woodrow is calling all those sources unreliable. That's something that you really have to understand. When he says that Mr. Hislop's book is absolutely... Um, a forgery, a lie, whatever you want to call it, whatever he calls it, it's not true. Yeah, It's, um, as we can later see, his made-up own history, that's what he calls it, believe it or not, I will read that to you. Then also all the sources that Mr. Hislop and also all the sources that Mr. Woodrow at that time used for proving his point that all religion, and first of all, of course, the Roman Catholic religion, Rome has its origin in Babylon, are wrong. And of course, we all know, that also means that he calls the Bible a lie. When you understand truly what he says, he is saying that. But let me continue, and you will understand that probably better without making me any accusations, but you will have your own understanding when I read this. There are many works, or many more works, on the subject than just Alexander Hislop. You know, he may be based his book Babylon Mystery Religion on Alexander Hislop's work, but there are many more works on the same subject. And from Mr. Woodrow's point of view, all these must be wrong too, because according to him, Rome did not originate in Babylon. That's the whole reason of his recanting this book, saying Rome does not come out of Babylon. So every other source that points to the origin of the last kingdom Daniel prophesied in Daniel 2 and Daniel 5, I think it was, 
the last kingdom of this earth, you know, starting with Babylon, then Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome, all these sources are wrong. That means that ultimately he is even calling the Bible a lie, because in the Bible you can trace all religions back to Babylon. The most important book for all of mankind is the Word of God. There is not one book written by man that even can come close to the truth the Word of God reveals to us. With that in mind, listen to the rest of this video. The link to Rav Woodrow's website, as I stated already, where you can read it, uh, the recantation on your own, is provided in the description box of the video, so you can, of course, inform yourself on both sides of the story. In his ministry, <coughs> Rav Woodrow, that is, he uses other Bibles than the 1611 King James Version. There, to me, already is a start of who is not wrong. Or who is not right, <laughs> who is wrong and who is not right. That's, I have to say it like that. He says that Alexander Hislop's book, The Two Babylons, is a work of, and this is a quote, This is not factual history. It is more in the category of tabloid sensationalism. Unquote. Moreover, Mr. Woodrow says <coughs> that, uh, that, quote, Hislop forms his own history, unquote. He says, quote, Hislop, for example, taught that mythological persons like Adonis, Apollo, Bacchus, Cupid, Dagon, Hercules, Janus, Marth, Mars, Mithra, Moloch, Orion, Osiris, Pluto, Saturn, Vulcan, Zoresta, and many more were all Nimrod. He then formed his own quote-unquote history of Nimrod, end quote, from the recantation of Mr. Woodrow. Well, I'm just saying that when you read Hislop's book, you will learn that he sustained his own history, as Mr. Woodrow calls it, on numerous other historians and historic figures who wrote about these events. And I even leave out the Bible. But to name a few, Eusebe Salverté. Gebelin, Hesiod, Herodot, Eliot, Dr. Maitland, Potter, who wrote Illusinia, Dupuis, Wilkinson, Bischof Hay, Bonson, Uveroff, Mallet, Moore, Colonel Vance Kennedy, Parkhurst, who wrote the Hebrew Lexicon, Layard, who wrote Babylon and Nineveh, Colonel Kennedy, who wrote Hindu Mythology, Gillespie, Jamblichus, Cicero's works, Pausanias, Diodorus Siculus, Athenagoras, Pascal, Servius, Sharon Turner, Eschito, and many, many more. But I think you get the point. Woodrow cites the Catholic Encyclopedia itself more than 63 times in his book to confirm the points made by him and or Hislop. He cites the Encyclopedia Britannica the Jewish Encyclopedia, the Encyclopedia of Religions, Fawcett's Bible Encyclopedia, Harper's Bible Dictionary, the official Baltimore Catechism, Helena Blavatsky's Isis Unveiled, Lorraine Bettner's Roman Catholicism, by the way, that is a book that I will also read in the future here on YouTube, and many other sources listed in the book that you can check for yourself. All to prove the general fact that Rome is Babylon. So when all these sources are wrong, and only Mr. Woodrow is wrong, then all these sources, including the Bible, are wrong. And not to forget the Bible itself, as I already said, because the Word of God is the only truth. He denies that too then? So with his retraction of that book, all these sources are unreliable, untrue, own-made history, as he accuses Hislop to have done so, and it's all just, yes, let's call it what Ralph Woodrow does not say out loud, but in his heart means, conspiracy theory. So by the way, when you check other works of Ralph Woodrow, you will also learn that he does not identify the papacy as the only true biblical, historical and prophetic 
Antichrist. In his book, Babylon Mystery Religion, the word Antichrist is mentioned not even once. He does not believe that our Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled the prophecy of Daniel 9 completely 2,000 years ago. So I think I already said enough, and without any further delay I will now turn to read to you the letter John Rothacker wrote to Ralph Woodrow on June 30th, 1989, after receiving the newsletter from Ralph Woodrow. And the letter starts with Dear Brother, I just received your June newsletter and believe the Lord wants me to respond. I was so shocked, grieved and disappointed last fall when I read your three books the Babylon Connection, Christmas Reconsidered, and Easter, is it pagan? I want you to know that this is not a hate letter as you indicate you have received from some, but written in the love of Jesus whom you trust in, and one whom <coughs> we know loves us and therefore chastens us. Dear brother, I believe with all my heart and from revelation that you have compromised the truth, even deceived, and are in serious error. And that is one reason why your finances have dwindled, as that is always one way the Lord begins to deal with those in ministry who are living by faith. It is a sign. After much prayer about you, I did not feel before led to write to you. But now that the spirit that has taken hold of you is further trying to even stop the publication of Hislop's classic and most excellent book, referring to the two Babylons here, I believe the Lord has spoken to me to write to you. I could write volumes, but believe the Lord would have me point out some very simple things which can show you that you have been deceived and are under another spirit. First, do you think that anyone that has been born of God and filled with His Spirit could write a book, publish it successfully for over 30 years, and not have the Holy Spirit that lives within long before then reveal to the author that the book is in serious error? I do not believe this, Ralph, and I don't believe very many others would either. Not any with any real knowledge of the Spirit of Truth, at least. Secondly, I read all three of your new books, checked out every reference which you gave in The Babylon Connection to The Two Babylons, and believe you are not only wrong in your analysis, but are guilty of the very things you accuse Hislop of doing, only more so. I could go into great detail in your books, but let me give an illustration of this from your recent newsletter. You write, quote, but saying that the worship of the Virgin Mary started with the worship of Nimrod's wife, Semiramis, is simply not true. Semiramis was no virgin. She was known for her gross immorality. Unquote. Ralph, you are implying that because Semiramis was not known for her purity, that it is wrong to imply that the worship of Mary, the Virgin, could be connected, and therefore Hislop is so obviously wrong in his analysis. Well, Hislop wrote very plainly that Semiramis was immoral. On pages 5, 69 and 229 he makes this clear. He says she had a, quote, depraved and polluted mind, unquote, on page 5, that, quote, the licentious and dissolute life of Semiramis gave her many children, unquote, on page 69, and that, quote, the wife of Vulcan was noted for her infidelities and licentiousness, the wife of Nimrod was the very same, unquote, as we can read in page 229 of the two Babylons. So throughout his book, from the beginning, in the middle, and to the end, Hislop reveals the immoral character of Semiramis. What Hislop is comparing and revealing is that the worship of this mother, the mother of the mother-child cults that were known throughout the Old and New Testament times, was taken into Christendom, and that wicked spirit is what is behind the worship of Mary, who he also believes was a virgin until after the birth of our Lord Jesus. 
Ralph, this is a sample of the wrong spirit that you are now in, and a sample of your false reasonings and conclusions. A sample of your false accusations against Alexander Hislop, who wrote such a marvelous work that even you quoted from it extensively for over 30 years. I have dozens and dozens of examples of errors marked in your new book, some of which are even worse. But next, I want to show you another of your errors, which anyone who can read can observe very easily. In your book, The Babylon Connection, on pages 50 and 51, <coughs> you refute that Rome is the city spoken of in the book of Revelation, and which, Hitch, which Hislop so accurately refers to. You state that it is because the Vatican Hill is not one of the original seven hills of Rome, and that secondly, the hills of Rome are not mountains, as the scripture gives us. Ralph, you are wrong and I do not believe honest at all on this point. And it shows what spirit you are under. First, when John wrote Revelation, he stated concerning the beast upon which the woman is riding that, quote, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, unquote, as we can read in Revelation 17, verse 9, and that, quote, the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth, unquote, as we can read in Revelation chapter 17, verse 18. Anyone who has done any study and reading on this subject knows this is Rome. Only Rome. You did enough original research to know this. You know that Rome was well known for being, quote, the city of seven hills, unquote, the Urbs Septicollis, as it was referred to in Latin. In fact, let me quote portions from some of my writing on this subject. Quote, the next reference to Babylon the Great is Revelation 16, verse 19, where we find that she is a great city that is judged when the other cities of the world are judged. Then we have chapter 17, where we are told symbolically that Babylon the Great is a great whore, a harlot, a prostitute, that sits on many waters and fornicates all over the world with kings and the inhabitants of the earth, and also sits on a beast of seven heads, as we can read in Revelation 17, verses 1 through 3. Then it is explained to us the meaning of all this symbolism. From the literal meaning of the Greek word used, Babylon is actually an idolatrous city of seven mountains or hills, and reigns, literally has kingship, over the kings of the earth at that time, this was written in approximately A.D. 95, which city has dominion over nations, multitudes of them, and over races or ethnic groups, and the peoples who speak different languages, thus a description of worldwide power and influence. And therefore we read in Revelation 17, um, verse 2, 9, 15, and 18. Rome had been, was then, and would continue for several hundred more years to be the city from which a world empire ruled over the earth. This was the kingdom revealed through Daniel over 600 years earlier. You remember me saying that already earlier in this video. No other ruling city in the history of the world is known as the city of seven hills as Rome is. Known far and wide as the Urbs Septicollis, quote, the city of the seven hills, unquote. Only Rome was, quote, the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth, unquote, as we read in Revelation 17, verse 18. As we have seen that this Babylon of Revelation is Rome, let me give a few objections to this truth and the explanation as to why they are incorrect. Some say that Babylon is not a city, because in Revelation 17 verse 10 the seven heads are given meaning as seven kings. However, a careful examination of the text in both the English and the Greek 
will give us the truth that John is saying that the seven heads of the beast have a double meaning. One is to the city of seven hills in verse 9 and the other is to the fact that there are seven kings in verse 10. Both interpretations to the vision of a woman, meaning a church, sitting upon a beast of seven heads in verse 3. Again, the woman, a church, don't forget that people, again, the woman is the city that sits on seven hills in verses 9 and 18. And this city is seen riding the beast that has seven kings, one of which is the final beast. Kings that are beasts are men who rule like brute beasts without the heart of God. They rule out of the unregenerate nature of man while being possessed with demonic spirits. This final ruler will be given power and great authority and his throne from the old dragon himself, Satan as we read in Revelation 12, verse 9, and in Revelation 13, verses 2 through 4. And another beast, the false prophet, will cause all upon the earth to worship the first beast, which we commonly call the Antichrist, the papacy from the start. And you can read that in Revelation 13, verses 11 through 12, and Revelation 19, verses 19 through 20. The Antichrist, the papacy, or the beast, is the final embodiment of all that is of Satan. And he is the one whom Satan forces all to worship instead of God's true Christ, the Lord Jesus. And for reference, read Revelation 13, verse 4, 16, verse 13, 20, verse 2, and 10. Now, this is still quoting from uh, his own work here, continues. Now let us look more clearly at the city of Rome, or Roma as it is in Latin. Amazingly, it was founded on a site where originally on, uh, on the Capitoline Hill, a temple of the Babylonian Messiah had been erected in what was then called Saturnia, quote-unquote, the city of Saturn, another name for Nimrod, therefore the city of Nimrod. Rome's beginning is a mixture of truth and error. Yeah, and it's always a mixture of truth and error. It's always a mixing of the holy with the profane. Rome's beginning is a mixture of truth and error, which is, as we have seen, a chief characteristic of Babylon. Romulus, Rome's founder and first king in 753 BC, and the one from whom we get the name, was according to tradition the twin son of Mars and was preserved when outcast by his cruel relatives through the kind attention of a wolf and a shepherd's wife. Romulus killed his brother Remus over a dispute regarding the founding borders of Rome. So we can see that the historical and mythological origins of Rome are exactly what we would expect as we see the history of this world famous city revealed throughout the centuries until now. Satan of course is the wolf and the church is the true shepherd's wife and we shall see this continually attempt to mix and accommodate truth with error. Christianity with paganism, true religion with false religion throughout the long history of Rome. First, idolatrous Babylonian worship, then leaders who have murdered one another to gain dominance from its very inception, is the foundation of Rome. The roots of selfish, ambition, pride, rebellion and unbelief concerning the true and living God have been with violence and demonic inspiration from the beginning. Rome's location is in central Italy on the western coast, just 17 miles up the Tiber River which empties into the Tyrrhenian Sea, an arm of the Mediterranean Sea. Built originally on marshy ground, again it is a mixture of land and water. And I just want to insert here, I read to you already before that there is an accord between the 
city of Washington DC in the United States of America and Rome in Italy that they are sister cities. And when you go back into the history of Washington, as you can understand when you read the book Rulers of Evil from F. Tapper Saucy or follow my reading of that book, you know that in the 16, if I'm not mistaken, 1663 uh, land records, Washington DC was called Rome. And it also was a marshy ground in that time. So Washington over there, which was originally called Rome, has very, very much in common with the Rome we have in Italy. And the river that is today called the Potomac was then called the Tiber, as is the river in Rome. Okay? Built originally on marshy ground. And this is for Washington DC the same as it is for Rome in Italy. Again, it is a mixture of land and water. At first, the settlement included only the Palatine Hill. But as the years went on, other hills were added. And legend tells us that a later ruler, Servius Tullius, enclosed seven hills within a wall on the east side of the Tiber River during his reign between 578 and 534 BC. Later, there is evidence that a wall which is still partially in existence, so you can check that for yourself today, was built around the Seven Hills in 378 BC. And this wall is named the Servian Wall, in honor of Servius Tullius. The historic Seven Hills are the Palatine, the Capitoline, the Quirinal, the Seeliane, the Aventine, the Esquiline, and the Viminal Hill. Hence, Rome has been called in Latin the Urbs Septicollis, the City of Seven Hills. Many centuries later, after the time of Christ and the writing of the New Testament, more hills, such as the Vatican Hill on the west side of the Tiber, were enclosed within another larger wall by the Emperor Aurelian in AD 270 which wall also still partially stands today and is called the Aurelian Wall. Now, modern Rome today includes not only the historic Septimontium, the seven hills of ancient Rome and the additional hills within the Aurelian Wall, but also a much larger area in order to accommodate the present population. Interestingly, when Romulus started the settlement on the ruins of Saturnia, he induced fugitives, criminals and foreigners to live there. And so Rome was started as an asylum for outlaws. Consequently, respectable people shunned the inhabitants of Rome, who then obtained their wives by strategy. They put on a show which attracted a neighboring group of people called Sabines and then captured for themselves wives from among them by force. Later, a compromise was worked out with the Sabines, who then became joint occupants of the city. In 714 BC, Romulus suddenly disappeared and was reported to have been taken up to heaven. The city then gave him divine honors under the name of Quirinus, built a temple in his honor and ranked him among the twelve great deities. A priest called Flamen Quirinalis, breather of Quirinus, a priest who bestows the spirit by breathing upon, was then appointed to offer him sacrifices. And thus we have the origins of the world-famous city of Rome, worshipping man and flaming idolatry, building temples in vain glorious exaltation of its leaders. Rome, corrupt with Babylonian traditions and spirits from the beginning, destined to be as ancient Babylon, quote, a synonym for political power and territorial expansion, unquote, from the original Angus Bible Dictionary. Another error being taught today in order to try and disprove Rome from being the Babylon of Revelation, and therefore all that this involves, is that Rome is situated on more than seven mountains, and that actually they are not mountains at all, as the scripture records, but simply hills. Now, 
First, we have amply shown how the historic seven hills of Rome were originally enclosed within a wall that surrounded the city for over 500 years, and that wall was the wall of the city during the writing of the book of the Revelation. Secondly, the Greek word used in scripture is the word ore, a plural form of the noun oros, and means a rising and can refer to either a hill or a mountain, as can be clearly seen by its use in the scriptures. For instance, the Sermon on the Mount, as we know it, was given on an oros. We read that in Matthew 5, uh, chapter 1, uh, sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And anyone who has been there by the Sea of Galilee can tell you that the traditional spot is a gradual sloping hill, and that all the area around there is similar. When Jesus said, quote, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hit, unquote, the same word is used, oros. We read that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Also, the quote-unquote Mount of Olives, which most people have seen in pictures, if not in fact, is not a high mountain, but a large hill overlooking the Kidron Valley and across to the western to the eastern wall of Jerusalem. I've personally walked from the Wailing Wall down through the valley, past the Garden of Gethsemane, and up to the hill to the summit in a few minutes, and the same word is used in Scripture, Oros, in Matthew 21 verse 1, Matthew 24, verse 3, and Matthew 26, verse 30. We have also seen no other his city in history is known as the city of seven hills, as Rome has been for over 2,500 years. One can look at encyclopedias, reference books, both religious and secular, Bible handbooks, and this truth is readily found. And let me give one concluding remark from the official English Bible of the Roman Catholic Church since AD 1609, the Douai version, reference to the Apocalypse. I have to insert here, the Douai version of the Bible is the Jesuit Bible. Okay, keep that in mind. So what does the Douai version's reference to in the Apocalypse or Revelation, meaning chapter 17, verse 5? Quote, a mystery, that is, a secret, because what follows on the name and the title of the great harlot is to be taken in a mystical sense, Babylon, either the city of the devil in general, or, if in this place be to be understood of any particular city, pagan Rome, which then and for three hundred years persecuted the church, and was the principal seat of empire and idolatry." Unquote. Now, concerning calling cities by other names and revealing mysteries as John does in Revelation 17, verse 5, 9 and 18, he had just referred to Jerusalem in a spiritual or, as some call it, in a mystical sense. He wrote concerning the two witnesses which will be killed during the reign of the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 11, um, verse 8, quote, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Unquote. And adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. Verse 4. Extremely wealthy meaning. And committing acts of fornication in verses 2 and 4 and chapter 18 verse 3, meaning idolatry. And who sits... Quote, on a scarlet beast, <coughs> full of blasphemous names, unquote. Verse 3, a wicked governmental power against God and his kingdom. And on, quote, unquote, seven mountains, as we read in verse 9, the historical worldwide reputation of Rome, who kills the witnesses of Jesus, as we read in verse 6, meaning true Christians, and is called Mystery Babylon as we can read in verse 5, a mystery, a hidden secret, 
and in verse 7 interpreted spiritually as a city which in worship holds on to the demons and doctrines of the mystery cults of ancient Babylon which had been destroyed. And he concludes by writing, quote, And the woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns. Therefore is used the Greek word exousa basilian, has kingship or royal dominion, present active tense when this was written, you know, by John the Revelator, over the kings of the earth, as we can read in verse 18. Identifying this woman as the ruling city of the world at that time. John therefore positively identifies this city as none other than Rome. And this city, which was the seat of the idolatrous Roman Empire, which persecuted Christians, was not only at that time pagan Rome, but later its Babylonian spirits and doctrines invaded the church here and continued the idolatrous empire, which has ever since been called Papal Rome. And only the spiritually blind, such as the uneducated, the willfully ignorant, or those hanging on to the same spirits and doctrines, will not understand this. And I have to add here, also those working an agenda that is again against our Lord Jesus Christ. All these people, only the spiritually blind, such as the uneducated, the willfully ignorant, or those hanging on to the same spirits and doctrines, will not understand this. The amazing thing is that even some, <coughs> some who once saw the truth and even taught it, are now denying the truth. But the scripture is true and is being fulfilled, as we can read in Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. Quote, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness." Unquote. Ralph, this speaks of you. You have allowed another spirit to take hold of you and to refute the truth which you held to and God supported for thirty years. Certainly, there are those who see the truth in your original book, Babylon Mystery Religion. Like me. That's why I read that book completely on my channel. And I will still support that book in the future. And yet are not in the right spirit and so have ha hate and anger against innocent people whom God loves and is trying to reach with the true gospel of love and forgiveness, but that doesn't negate the truth of God. The Pharisees distorted God's word and professed to love God's word and yet killed the incarnate word. It has always been and will be until Jesus comes or changes them. You have many stories, I am sure, through 30 years of teaching which could really help the church, but the course you are now taking is not the way. It is against the truth and hurting the cause of Christ by covering up a system, a mother of harlots, with many daughters and granddaughters who all need to be exposed for what they are and the true church to be revealed. And also, Ralph, you are now trying to discredit a book and author which God has blessed throughout many years and used to enlighten many as to the truth of many different aspects of Babylonian religion, and you will not succeed. I charge you before God to repent, or God will chasten you most severely. How? I do not know. But he will. That I know. And he already is to some degree, if you realized what, he has been, uh, what has been happening to you and your spirit and understanding. Don't ask for money. Ask for mercy and grace 
to help in this extremely important time of need. Ralph, I love you for what you wrote of the truth before, but only can shake my head and pray for you now. But it is not too late to recover yourself from the snare of the devil himself, for you have been taken captive by him to do his will now, and not that of our Heavenly Father. Please, brother, repent and do your first works, your true works of love and truth. We are praying for you and your wife. Since you sent a copy of your book to the publishers of, Hel of Hislop's book, I must send them this letter as well. You will be dishonored by many if you do not recover yourself. May God grant you the, the gift of repentance is my prayer. Written in the love of Jesus, asking for his mercy and grace to be extended to you and your family. Amen. Signed, John P. Rothacker. I think this brother in Christ made probably an even deeper point than I made, but now take the points that I made in the beginning of this video <coughs> and the points of Brother Rothacker together. Do your own research. Read the book Babylon Mystery Religion completely for yourself or watch my reading of it in total. Consider everything said and written in this video and then make up your own mind. And understand, please, I didn't make this video to condemn Ralph Woodrow or be mad at him or hate him or stir hatred at him or whatever. No, in the same spirit that Mr. Rothacker wrote his letter to Ralph Woodrow, I am doing this, that he comes out of it. He was probably once a saved Christian, and with all this false doctrine he is writing now in his books only to make money, he probably is not anymore, and that is a lost soul, and we have to fight for every soul. Ralph Woodrow wrote a great book with Babylon Mystery Religion. And as I am reading the two Babylons of Alexander Hislop in German myself, I can tell you that this book of Ralph Woodrow actually is more accessible. It is easier to understand because Alexander Hislop's work is quite, well, I don't know if the expression is right in English, quite dry to read sometimes. You really have to get into it, really concentrate very, very hard. And Ralph Woodrow's book is very open to the mind. It, it, it opens up very easy. He makes the explanations very easy to understand. You, you, you take it in, um, yeah, like, 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 a ni like a nice soft drink or whatever. I mean, it, it, it really, it pours down and it, it's, it's like oil for your soul. It is a wonderful book, Babylon Mystery Religion. Don't get me wrong. But if you want to, you can get his new book, um, you know, that was the question mark in the back there, um, where he questions everything and recants of this book, and then make up your own mind. Do your own studies on this. Um, but please, you cannot have any opinion on this subject if you didn't read Alexander Hislop's The Two Babylons. You cannot have any meaning on this, any opinion on this, if you haven't read completely Babylon Mystery Religion from Ralph Woodrow, and you cannot have a complete understanding of this if you do not know your Bible. If you know your Bible and you know the two books I've mentioned, well, then your comments are probably welcome beneath my video, and I'd like to hear your opinion. But you have to understand, I was absolutely aware of that he recanted of this book, Babylon Mystery Religion, before I even started reading it, and I didn't care, because I knew the information in there was correct. And the Bible is correct. When the Bible says that all religion, man-made belief systems, come out of Babylon. And Rome is the Babylon today. You can read that in the Bible. Babylon Mystery Religion is a book written by a man confirming the word of God. And then he retracts of that book and that means that he is denying the word of God. Everything said up to here. Make up your own mind. 
And until next time, may God bless you all. Maranatha. Bye-bye.